This is the binomial expansion formula that you use in C2. You've got an A and a B, and the powers all start on the A, and then none on the B, and then slowly the powers on the A go down, and slowly the powers on the B go up, until you reach the other end, when B has all the power. Now I'm going to make some little adjustments to this formula to make it applicable for the case where n is not a natural number, so not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but things like minus a half, 2, blah, blah, blah. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change an A to 1. And what that's going to do is it's going to make this 1 to the n, which is 1, 1 to the n minus 1, which is 1, 1 to the n minus 2, which is 1, 1 to the n minus 3, which is 1. So that's going to make a big difference. I'm going to write Y instead of B, not that that's a huge, huge difference really, it's just a different letter. And I'm going to have a little play with these coefficients. So n choose naught. what's that mean? It means n factorial over naught factorial, n minus naught factorial. That's the definition, which is n factorial over naught factorial, n factorial, which is n factorial over n factorial, because naught factorial is 1, which is 1. OK, that's fine. I'm going to leave that alone. n choose naught equals 1. Next one, n choose 1 is n factorial over uh, 1 factorial, n minus 1 factorial. So on the top, I've got n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, all the way down to 3, 2, 1. On the bottom I've got 1 factorial, times n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to 3, 2, 1, and these all cancel. Cancel, 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 cancel. Leaving me with n over 1, which is n. Okay, that's great, I'm going to use that. n choose 1 is n. Next one, n choose 2 n factorial over 2 factorial, n minus 2 factorial equals n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, all the way down, 3, 2, 1, divided by 2 factorial, times n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, blah, 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 3, 2, 1. Cancel, 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 oops, cancel, cancel, leaving me with 1 over 2 factorial, n, n minus 1. Next one. I'm not going to bother after this. Hopefully you'll see the pattern. n factorial over 3 factorial. n minus 3 factorial. On the top, n. n minus 1. n minus 2. n minus 3. Down to 3, 2, 1. On the bottom, 3 factorial times n minus 3. n minus 4. Blah, blah, blah. Down to 3, 2, 1. So I've got this n minus 3 factorial here. And I've got n minus 3 factorial here. And that, that's what's cancelling. So that's leaving me with 1 over 3 factorial n, n minus 1, n minus 2. OK, let's put these in at the top. n minus 2. n choose 2 is a half n, n minus 1. And n choose 3 is a 1 over 3 factorial, which is a sixth n, n minus 1, n minus 2. And obviously I could just keep going. So what does the formula look like now? Well, it sets 1 plus, oh my, I've rubbed out my b equals y, 1 plus y to the n equals n choose naught, which is 1, a to the n is 1, b is going to be y, b to the naught, sorry, is y to the naught, which is 1, so 1 plus, n choose 1 is n, a, a is now 1, so a to the n minus 1 is 1, b is y, n, y, plus, n choose 2, a half n, n minus 1, and then b, which is y squared. And then n choose 3 would be 1 over 3 factorial, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and then it will be y cubed plus etc. Now the difference between these two really is nothing. All I've done is write it a different way. But what's interesting is that this formula here depends upon n being a natural number. n must equal 1, 2, 3, 4. Why? Partly because we can only do the uh, n choose 1 if we've actually got something to choose from. So you can't do minus 3 choose 1. How many different ways are there to choose one thing from minus 3 things? Doesn't even make sense. How many ways are there to choose one thing from four things? That makes sense. So in order for the n choose r bit to make sense, we need n to be a natural number. And also, we've got our power on b growing 0, 1, 2 until it gets to n. So n has to be a natural number so that the power can actually get there. And coming the other way down, 
this has to be the power going down in ones until it gets to zero on the a. So if n is minus three, this this really this whole thing doesn't make sense. But all I've done is write it a different way, and now n being minus four is fine. If n is minus four, we can just put a minus four here, minus four, minus four, minus four, minus four. It's no problem. It's going to be an infinite series. It's going to go on and on and on and on and on. It'll never stop. But if y is between minus one and one, a bit like with a geometric series, if that power, that power there, even though it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, if the power is on top of something which is between minus one and one, then that thing itself, as the power grows, will get smaller and smaller and smaller. If y is between minus one and one, then y to the n goes towards zero as n goes towards infinity, and one plus y to the n, the expansion given by that formula, will converge. It will get closer and closer to the true value of 1 plus y to the n. So that's how we construct the binomial expansion that we use in C4, where we've got n is any real number, so not just a natural number, which is what we required in C2.